Hi, this is Elizabeth Cermak from Your Highest Light. I am a master life coach and a psychotherapist turned life coach. And I help help people move from, I, I, I like to call myself lately an inner peace coach. So I help people find inner peace and I help people through that inner peace build more beautiful lives. So I am here every Tuesday at 3.33. I have decided we are calling it Transformation Tuesday. So here for Transformation Tuesday, every Tuesday at 3.33, my new time for the new year. It's the year of threes, 2019. So today we're going to talk about something that is not only my story, but it's every human being's story. So if hopefully you can relate to this. And if you can relate to this, if you're watching this on the replay, always do hashtag replay. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube. Um, I appreciate any followers I get on YouTube. I don't have, I don't even know if I, I'd never check that out. <laughs> so I always want to tell people, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. And um, so my videos every week really are about attracting a more beautiful life and a lot about mindset and a lot about mental health as well. Since my in my past life, I was a psychotherapist. I'm good at teaching people to change their thoughts around and change their lives around. So Today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to kind of update you guys. I haven't been on for a couple weeks. I want to update you guys on how my year ended and both the good and the bad. And like I say, this is not only my story, this is everybody's story. So if you're having on, let me know. Hi, I, hi, I see some people having on. Sometimes I can't always see on Instagram. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I can't always see the name. So if you're having on, let me know. Say hi. Tell me where you are um, watching from and let me know like tell me what your intention is for the new year like what is your new your word for the new year um, my yoga teacher every year does that they does that um, exercise where you pick a word that you want to represent you for the new year and I love that so it's like setting an intention for the new year my yoga teacher today talked about not making new year's resolutions because when you make resolutions Marie if you're on here I'm talking about you <laughs> if you make resolutions it's like saying that something needs to be resolved, that some, something is wrong with you, instead make intentions. So my intention for the new year is, and I actually have three intentions, peacefulness, jo um, joy, and strength. And I feel like, I was explaining this to my niece the other day, I feel like in order to have, I feel like you need strength in order to be joyful because this is in, in this world, it's very easy to complain and not be joyful. So I feel like it takes strength to let things go and to be happy and to be joyful. So that's kind of, I feel like those words are all combined. And for me, this year is hugely about inner peace. And I'm going to tell you guys why. So I'm going to read you guys a little something that I wrote that this is the beginning of the blog that I'm going to post after I do this video. And um, like I said, I'm live on Facebook and Instagram, and this is gonna go on YouTube as well later. So what it says is, what I'm about to tell you is not just my story, it is everyone's story. It is the human experience. It is the uncomfortable yet illuminating story of expansion. It is the messiness of the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. It is your story too, and it ends well. So I promise you it ends well, even if it doesn't feel good. So I'm going to talk today about the struggle and how, what we learn through the struggle and how to look at that struggle differently. A lot of times our egos will tell us, and I've seen probably thousands of clients um, through my job as a therapist and I've helped, so I've helped so many people and I've tended to specialize in anxiety. I would get a lot of people who needed help with, with anxiety, right? I'm not even big on the term anxiety because I feel like it's such a clinical term and we all have anxiety. Uh, anxiety, I, I'm, you know, I would teach in cognitive behavioral therapy about cognitive distortions and black and white thinking is like, that's a, we call it a cognitive distortion. But I'm learning now that that's the way of the human brain. So the human brain doesn't, and I just learned this from JV, Jocelyn King, the human brain doesn't want to see gray. So why are we calling this a distortion? Why are we making this a medical diagnosis, a medical problem when actually that's normal. That's how our human brain is. So we have to train our human brain to see things differently. So anyway, but I saw a lot of clients who had issues with anxiety. So some of us, this is not to take away from mental health or mental health diagnosis. Not at all. I, you know, I do believe in the benefits of mental health, um, mental health jobs, you know, therapy and, and whatnot and psychiatry and all that. But anyway, 
Um, I would see a lot of clients who would struggle with anxiety. And this is what I was going to say is that some of us have anxiety worse than others. So while yes, it's normal, it's a part of the human experience, I am one of these people who was born with an extra amount of anxiety. And I'm going to talk about this today. You know, I don't think of it, I used to think of it as a handicap, as a di medical diagnosis. I don't think of it that way anymore. I don't think of it as a handicap. I don't see myself as a victim. Um, I actually think it's a strength. And I'm going to talk about this in like a later episodes. I actually think that people who have that higher anxiety are the sensitive ones who can sense things from other, you know, spiritual things as well. So, but it's not about that today. So anyway, I would see a lot of clients who would struggle with anxiety and something would happen. They would go through a struggle in their life. Like they would be doing so well um, with being able to think differently, think more positively, not think so negatively all the time not deal with this anxiety, they would be doing really well and all of a sudden something would happen and it would come back. <laughs> and what happens when something like this in the self-development world, when we're working on something, we're working on our anxiety, we're working on our thoughts, we're working on our, um, we're working on feeling better. What happens is we tell ourselves, oh, we're back to square one. So that's what the ego will tell you. <laughs> you're back to square one. Nothing you're doing is working. Nothing will ever work. You'll never change, right? So when you when we deal with struggles, we tend to, the ego tends to speak up and tell us that. And let me tell you, it's lying. So that is the part of you that is a lie. That is a story you are telling yourself and you don't have to believe it. So, okay, so I'm going to tell you, so let's go back to 2018. Happy 2019, everybody, by the way. Hi. Um, it's so good to see you guys on Instagram. Okay, so... Let's go back to 2019. The end of my 2019 was amazing. So in December, I mean, this all kind of happened towards the end of the year. First of all, my business did like a 180. Um, I got this awesome business coach and life coach, Jamie Jocelyn King. Um, I became part of this group of amazing women who are all doing similar things to what I'm doing in the entrepreneur world. And my energy around that just totally shifted and changed. So I did like a 180 of my business. Um, the other thing that happened was my husband and I went to England for the first time, something we've always wanted to do. I feel like it is in a way our home. Um, so we got to experience that. We got to see two Beatles on stage at the same time. Huge surprise. Saw Paul McCartney twice in December. I connected with all my, my friends, my fan, for those who don't know me, my husband and I are big Paul McCartney fans and we follow him. <laughs> we see him multiple times a year and we have friends all over the world who are fans as well. So we met up with friends, you know, from all over the world in England. It was amazing. It's just something I never thought I would do. I've always been an introvert. I never have had a ton of friends. So I just thought, you know, just amazing. Just a to my social life, my marriage, my career, everything is expanding, right? And um, the other thing, you know, at the end of the year, like everybody, we get together with our families. Everything went really well. We got together with our families and ate, you know, I was eating I tend to eat healthy. I always say like if I say I eat unhealthy, my husband like laughs because he doesn't think I ever eat unhealthy. So our versions of unhealthy are very different. <laughs> but I was eating more like sugar, more, you know, things that I don't normally eat. And I'm totally okay with that. I don't feel guilty about that at all. But this is just my life. You know, this was just the end of 2018. And I'm sure this is a lot of, you know, a lot of you have similar stories. But the other thing that was going on at the same time that this was going on is, this is so weird because the live is not showing um, the time frame anymore. It used to. Okay. <laughs> I think it used to. So, okay. So the other thing that was going on at the same time is something not so good was going on. I was not feeling well. So during all of this stuff, I was not feeling well. And I don't know, I'm not looking for, I'm dealing, I'm looking, I see a doctor right now and we're, we're, um, working on it, what was happening was, I'm not, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not looking for advice or help or like a diagnosis because I've done it all. I think I know what it is and I've got it under control, but so I want to tell you guys about it because I think it would be, it would benefit you to hear what was going on with me. So I was getting nauseous. I was feeling nauseous like every day. And I don't know if anybody, if I have any, not nausea is something that <laughs> sort of runs in my family. I would say all the women in my family, we get motion sickness quite easily. Um, I feel like I've been nauseous a lot of my life. <laughs> that has a lot to do with, you know, anxiety as well. But it's a lot of, it's a combination of things. Even like overwhelming, if I get overwhelmed, I'm nauseous. So I was feeling nauseous like every day and you guys, it was so bad. I don't know if I have any nausea thrivers out there or survivors, but it sucks. And when I get nauseous, my mind races. And so that's what was going on. And so my anxiety was kind of like reveling up. 
Um, I don't like to call it my anxiety anymore. I'm trying to change that. The anxiety of the world that I would take that I take on. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to um, talk about that differently. Hi, Jen. Good to see you. Hi, Namo. Good to see you guys. Okay, so if you guys have anything, you know, questions or anything while I'm talking, I'm talking about the change, the new year, and how some good things that happen. And then what happens when good things happen is that we end up having struggles again. And so I'm kind of talking about that, how to get through those struggles and how to look at them differently. So like I said, I was not feeling well. And it was to the point where I'm like, told my husband, I cannot go to England feeling like this. I this is horrible. I um, I can't go to our family's Christmas party feeling like this. this. It just sucks. I can't. When you're nauseous, like I honestly, I'm at to the, I get to the point where it's like I don't. I want to cancel all my plans for the rest of my life because I don't think I'm gonna be able to go because I can't go when I feel like this. And you know, it passes. So I did. I was able to do all those things. I really think in England, I had such adrenaline going that I didn't. You know, that I it didn't affect me. I was able to go to all of our family stuff and be fine, um, but just had this underlying feeling of just not feeling good. So I ended up what happened is Christmas Day, I was with my husband. We had a nice time. We actually stayed home on Christmas this year, and we stayed home for New Year's. Um, and I, we were having a nice time just relaxing, eating, watching TV and stuff, and I started freaking out. Like, my mind was racing like crazy, and I was having that nauseousness again. And it wasn't like... I was worried, like with me, usually with when I talk about anxiety or worry, it's like I tend to get overly focused on something and worry about it or make it bigger than it is. And it wasn't that, it was almost like my brain was like thinking about 12,000 things at once, but I don't know what any of them were So because I, I couldn't focus on them. And so it really, it, it's a good thing that it happened because it really made me um, make some changes. And... I, ended, I wrote this blog yesterday and I'm gonna actually continue next week because this ended up being really long, just talking about, I talk about this is my, like, my crucifixion and my resurrection. So um, so it really, you know, it, it made me really look at what's going on and make some changes. So it's actually not a bad thing. But here are some things that I know about what was going on. So first of all, um, I was dealing with, my, I obviously was dealing with medical issues. It was very physical and I've been dealing with adrenal fatigue for a while, so it, it all is combined, right? So definitely had medical issues, um, you know, more on that later. So the other thing that was going on, and I felt so um, validated this last week, I did my part of my group coaching um, group, and my coach was like, yeah, there was some like weird energy online last month. Um, towards the end of the year and I was like oh my god thank you so much I felt so validating because I felt it and you know we're all I am a life coach but I'm also a human being and we're all, we all are human beings we're all spiritual beings having a human experience and that human experience sometimes it's uncomfortable and sometimes it feels bad and so I we're all affected by that and like my coach said even like the high up um, coaches like she could see it in everybody and with me what was going on was I was seeing everybody's darkness almost it was kind of a scary depressing feeling um, for me I was doing things that I don't normally do like comparing myself to other people I don't I'm actually very good at not doing that <laughs> I was I, I wouldn't say that I was doing it I was starting to like I, I could feel this voice you know creeping up and I would, um, what else I was gonna say? I, I would compare myself to others. Oh, I was taking things really personally. Everything, somebody, there was a lot of rants going on and everything somebody said, it felt personal, even though there was no way it was personal, okay? So I teach my clients this stuff all the time. You know, don't take anything personally. It's one of the four agreements. But anyway, it's just what was going on. So the other thing, so the third thing that was going on, so the medical issues, the strange energy is anxiety, my friend. So there's a reason why the Simon and Garfunkel song says, Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to speak with you again. Is it like, I've come to talk with you again or speak with you or whatever it is. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to speak with you again. So there's a reason why that song says that. And I'm going to tell you guys why. So we all have fears, right? And I was born, like I said, I was born with a lot of anxiety. So I've been something that I've struggled with my whole life. Um, and, you know, some of us have it worse than others. Like I've talked about that too. So Every time, my, I have made it my point in my life to find inner peace. That has been my mission. And that has been my mission since I've started my blog, actually, um, is that is the only thing I want. And that is the only thing I wanted was inner peace. And so what happened was I found it. I found inner peace. And the more I 
got in touch with that inner peace, the more I was able to take risks in my life and expand. And so then what happens, excuse me, what happens is every time you expand, old demons creep up. So the fear, this is why every time we, they call it leveling up, you know, when you level up in your life, sometimes, some, one time somebody looked at me like I was crazy when I said leveling up. So um, leveling up, I guess it's like a younger person's term. <laughs> um, it's like video games. When you would level up, when you would go up a level in a video game, it would mean that you did the other level well. It's, it's easy now. So you're, up, you're ready to go up a level. Everything's a little bit harder, but you're ready for it, okay? So when I think about it, the end of 2018, I leveled up in like every area of my life. And that is why my anxiety was kicking in, my fear was kicking in. I think it's part of why I didn't feel good physically um, because the, all that stuff was going on. So my point is that, let's see, I have my notes here. I wanna look to make sure. Okay, so the ego loves tiredness. If you use like when you're weak, it loves you when you're sick. Irvin Yalom, who's like the famous psychiatrist, used to say, he said something like, and I couldn't find this quote anywhere, but I read a book of his where he said something like, um, every time I'm tired, things I thought I took care of long ago come back, start creeping in. And so that's when the ego says, see, you haven't done, who are you to help people? You're a mess. Or you haven't done any of this work. You, you suck. You'll never change. This is always going to be this way. And that's not true. That's just a lie. So I always, I, tr I teach in my counseling, I teach in my life coaching, feelings aren't facts. And I know a lot of like woo coaches out there, which I am a very woo coach. <laughs> I um, am very into spirituality and all that kind of stuff but and thoughts becoming things. But I also believe that we can think anything we want. We can feel anything we want. They're not. It's not a fact. We get to choose what thoughts we put energy behind. We get to choose what thoughts we put feelings behind. Those are all choices, okay? So, um, so yeah, so my point is when you level up the fear, old demons are going to come back. And this is why a life coach, this is why you need a life coach. Because this is why we have, my mom was just saying today, everywhere she looks at the TV, she's saying life coaches. There's a reason. It's because our society, we are starting to thrive. And when you expand, you're thriving, right? So when you expand and you level up in your life, you're, th you're, you're thriving. Okay? So, and it's scary because what happens is old things come up. And then that's why we need those coaches and those mentors to talk to, to remind us who we are. To remind us that those demons, you know, are pathetic attempt to keep us down to remind us that what the truth is about us. For me, I don't want to go it alone. It's scary. It is scary leveling up. It's a, it's a scary feeling and fear comes in. And you know, so the, the the life coach helps you to exorcise those demons and the demons will happen. They'll come. And you know, so that's the point. So I want you to think too, if you're dealing with a difficulty, if it feels like everything's falling apart, if it feels like you're back to square one, it's possible that you're leveling up. It's possible that actually Things are, you have to shed your skin like a snake, right? You have to shed your skin before you come out as your highest self. So um, it's it happens in levels. And like I said, this is why life coaching or, you know, therapy or groups or anything that you can do to get help, to support people who are like-minded, who are into this stuff, who um, believe in the power of positive thinking and positive feeling, who believe, um, who see the light in people and in you, you know? So you need people to remind you. And it's not... Like my coach doesn't really, she does teach me stuff about business and stuff, but like I need a lot of mindset help as well. And everybody does. I mean, that's the hugest thing in business. And um, they don't, you're not, she's not teaching me anything I don't know. She's reminding me of things that I already know, right? So that's why, and I have my clients say this all the time. They're like talking out loud. They're like, I can't believe I'm saying this. Well, you know what? Say it out loud because when you hear yourself saying something like ripping on yourself or saying something horrible about yourself and you say it out loud, then you realize you're being an asshole to yourself and you will change, okay? <laughs> so um, I just want to make sure I haven't left anything out. So yeah, so I want you to, so I'm going to challenge you to think if you, to think about any challenge you are going through in your life, if it feels like things are falling apart and have you guys ever, you know, let me know, you can let me know in the messages, have you ever felt like things are falling apart and then you realize later on everything turns out fine and you're actually better off than you were? Um, I would love to know. Okay, so what's funny is, um, I... During this whole experience, first of all, I'm kind of amazed at how well I handled it. <laughs> when I look back, I mean, at the in the me five years ago, I just looked at a picture of me five years ago. I swear to God, I look older. I'm 41. I was 36. I swear I look older five years ago. And I think it's because I was concerned. I was so stressed all the time, right? And I feel like I'm 
more carefree now and at there's something about me. I feel younger. I don't think it's just, maybe it's not just the how I looked. I think it's also that I feel younger. Um, I probably feel younger now than I did when I was in my 20s because I was like so miserable and stressed out when I was in my 20s. So um, the me five years ago wouldn't have handled the nauseousness and the illness and everything, all the, the negative stuff that happened at the end of the year would not have handled that well. She would have freaked out about the freak out and she would have had a meltdown about the meltdown. Okay, so she would have made it all like way worse. And so looking back, I'm really proud about how I handled it. And I know that I did level up because, you know, it was kind of smooth. And so that's a good, that's an awesome thing to realize. And so, it's, you know, journaling about this stuff, you guys, I always recommend journaling because it does help because you come to these realizations. Um, so my story does end very well. 2019 is um, a numerology. When you add it up, it's a three, which is a very magical number. So it's a year of threes. I'm seeing threes all over the place. It's crazy. And um, my husband and I are so excited about this year. I, anybody who knows us personally, we've had some pretty amazing years in our marriage, but we feel like this is going to be the best, most magical year ever. We can feel it. And so I want to talk to you guys next week about how I got through this, like what, how it kind of catapulted me into another level and what I did with that and how I know my 2019 is going to be the best year ever. So I want to talk to you guys about that and how you guys can do the same thing. So 2019 can be your best year ever. And um, I'm going to teach you how to stay focused on what you want um, on, on what, you know, how to, let's see, how to pick things that you're going to focus on this year in order to make yourself happy, basically. So next week, it's called How to Connect with Yourself Again, Find Your Vision, Values, and Focus for 2019. Um, okay, so to celebrate the 333s, oh, the other thing I want to talk to you guys about was um, Britt Carmichael. I watched one of her videos and she recommended this deck of cards. So it's Work Your Light Oracle Cards by Rebecca Campbell. And what's so amazing with this deck of cards, I can't, I, so I prop, this probably came in the mail like right before Christmas. And I pulled the same card, like, I am I would say eight out of ten times. So the first couple times I kind of ignored it, and then I kept on pulling it. <laughs> and I, it was like, it was insane, you guys. Would not even, it was crazy. So the card that I kept pulling, and I'm not going to be able to find it right now, of course, when I want to, I'm not going to be able to find it, is, um, which is kind of a, like, a awesome now that I can't find it, because it just proves more that it was so real. Okay, so... The card I kept pulling was the Priestess card. And the Priestess cards, what it said was, you are ready. It's time to lead. It's time to step up. And it basically said that your followers or your, you know, the clients or whoever you're helping are not, and this is, so this message is not just for me. This is for people who are watching as well. So your um, followers, your clients, the people that you're helping, they're not um, looking for a perfect angel. And for me, that was perfect because I love angels, right? So they're not looking for a perfect angel. They're looking for a human being. So it's time to show up for them how you are. Be messy. You don't have to have it all figured out. I Every time I plan this live video, I'm not ready. Like something happens at the end. I must be in my brain where I'm like, oh, I didn't do that. Whatever. You have to still go on. So that's probably something I could have done better. I could not have gone on TV in my nausea, but TV, um, you know what I'm saying, YouTube, or if it, I couldn't have gone on live with my not with feeling like nauseous, but I could have gone on more um, talking about what I was going through as I was going through it, just who I am. And you know what, I have to do that every day when I see my clients, I have to show up, um, even if I don't feel well, and even if I, mentally or physically, and I always feel better after seeing them, like it's it's amazing. So anyway, so the, um, I wanted to let you guys know I'm starting, I'm offering a life coaching package. I have three spots open and I'm giving four sessions right now for $333. It comes out to like $83 a session or something like that. So it's an awesome deal, you know, for changing your life. It's an awesome deal. And this is a great time to start with a life coach, you know, at the beginning of the year. So three sessions for $333. I'm going to put, or I'm sorry, four sessions for $333. There's, four is very um, symbolic as well means balance so I'm going to put I'll put the link actually on, on Instagram the link is in my bio and on Facebook I can put the link below to fill out an application in order to work with me one-on-one -on -one. and if you fill out the application you get a free gift a free PDF from me um, that's about self-coaching that will just honestly just doing that and getting that PDF will, will help you um, for the year the other thing that I'm going to announce this is so exciting is that Louis Cavazos and I we kind of 
Um, we used to do our living meaningful and magic, living meaningfully and magically every week, and we're back this week. So we um, reconnected over the holidays, and so we're back. And tonight we're going to be going live at 7:30 on Instagram. Um, so follow me on Instagram, Elizabeth underscore your highest light, and you can follow you can see Luis and I tonight at 7:30 Central Time. Okay, I think I remembered everything. So I am excited to see you guys every third, every Tuesday now at 3:33. If you have any um, topics or any questions or any topics that you want me to cover, please, you can either send me a private message if you want to, or you can put it in the comments below. Um, cause I would love to know, you know, what you guys need. So next week we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about the new year and how to get your goal. Now I don't want to call them goals, how to, um, focus yourself, how to feel good, how to be happier in the new year. And so we're gonna talk about that, how to get connected, how to connect spirituality, how to um, connect with a higher power. So we're gonna talk about that. I'm really decided that this year I'm going, my direction is really gonna be about finding inner peace. So I wanna help as many people as I can begin and continue and grow on this journey to inner peace because what happens, it's like what I said, is that the more peace you find, the more risks you're gonna take, the more you're gonna expand, the more you're gonna thrive. But then what happens is you gotta find that peace again because old fears will come up every time. And that's why we are in the age of life coaching. We're in the age of thriving. Um, so cool. Everybody, you know, we realize that we can, we're in an age where we should be happy and we deserve that. So, okay, I love you guys so much. Prudence is always here with me. <laughs> Sitting, she's the ultimate lap dog. And so I love you guys. I will see you next Tuesday at 3.33 or I might see you tonight with Luis and I. I will see you guys later. Bye. Mwah. Yeah. <laughs>